Hello everyone, it's my honor to expand our studies on assessing cloud with disaggregated software-defined router. I'm Xiao Liang Wang. This work cooperates with Zhao Hua, Yuan Wei, Yan Bo, Sheng Li, and Professor Zhao. We also thank the teams at Tyson Network Platform for their contributions to the work. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction of the scenario for customers to assess the cloud and the challenge we faced. Then, we will introduce the design of software-defined router. Take some use case to see how we address the challenges with the new architecture. And last, I'd like to share some operational experience and our future work. Testing Cloud now has 54 available zones spread across 27 regions globally. Customers are increasingly deploying their service on cloud, which are represented by VPC at the right side of this slide. How to effectively interconnect customers and their infrastructure with cloud is becoming more and more critical for us. There are various types of cloud access requirements. As shown in this figure, first, we have provided private connection service to allow direct connection between customers' on-premise data centers and the cloud access site. It requires high bandwidth, reliable, and secure network connections. Second, customers like the content provider and online education institutes run their computing and storage service in our cloud data center. We allow global end user to access this online service. In this case, we need to support a large amount of forwarding tables at the gateway and optimize the routing paths. Third, to allow enterprise branch to visit their resource on the cloud through the internet with low cost, we set up IPsec VPN and Leverage One optimization technology to simplify the optimization of cloud access. This service is recently called SD1 service. We can see that Cloud Gateway is the main component in the access site. Before, we mainly rely on the commodity router to build the access point. However, with the rapid increase of customers, many challenges have emerged, and we found that the traditional way cannot sustain anymore. The first challenge is the large scale of forwarding tables. For example, private connection gateway requires 10,000 worths for a large number of tenants, and the internet service requires up to 10 million forwarding tables. Second, we have to roll out new network features in short time to meet the various requirements. This requirement may come from the customers or cloud itself, like the self-defined protocols. Third, the capacity must be able to scale up easily to keep up with the fast growth of traffic volume. The current commodity routers has many limitations to meet the rapid growth of customers and their raising demands. For example, the processor capacity, routing table size, and bandwidth are usually configured with a fixed ratio. It's impossible to independently scale any of them. The traditional router is hardware software vendor lock-in. A minor revision may take vendor several months or even more time. Therefore, we set up a software-defined router to address the above challenge. We first review the architecture of a typical commodity router, which generally consists of three components. Processor acts as the control plan running protocols like BGP or OSPF. Switch fabric is responsible for high-speed interconnection. Line card acts as a forwarding plan with limited routing tables and fixed forwarding behaviors. With regard to this architecture, we introduce our disaggregated software-defined router, in short, DSR. The functions of a line card are divided into two components, the access plan and the forwarding plan. The access plan provides various types of interface and support layer 2 forwarding. We implemented it with a group of small commodity switch switches because it does not need a frequent update. The forwarding plan deals with layer 3 packet processing with large-scale forwarding tables. We introduced software forwarding module to achieve high feature velocity and scalability. The functions of processors are divided into two components, the routing plan and the control plan. They are also implemented with software the routing plan takes charge of the protocol and the routing management. The control plan stores the routes, generates the forwarding tables, and then installs the FIB and ARP tables to the forwarding plan. In short, each, each plan is deployed on a separate class, server cluster. 
No single server failure can cause the breakdown of the entire system. Each of them can be designed, maintained, and scaled independently as needed, because different plans require different resource setting. Due to software programmability, it is flexible to deploy new network features and interoperate with different kind of network and service. This is the architecture of DSR. At the edge, we deploy a SAS module to connect the external router. A SAS module is a simple commodity switch. Forwarding module is responsible for high performance packet processing. It communicates with the SAS module through VXLAN terminals and communicates with VPC through tenant self defined GRE terminal. Routing module is responsible for peering with the external router for exchanging the routing information. Orchestrator acts as a global controller, which is responsible for collecting traffic scheduling requirements from management system. Control module acts as a local controller, and it is responsible for programming configuration from orchestrator to local DSR. Next, I'm going to talk about the scalability of DSR. For interconnection, we leverage the class network, and the BGP is used among servers, access switch, and core switches. Each server is double connected to two access switches. Data plan, control plan, and the routing plan has its own scalability method. For example, for the forwarding plan, instead of exposing a single virtual IP for all the servers in the cluster, we introduce multiple virtual IP structure shared by the tenant. To avoid that each server has to support the entire routing tables of all the VPC. The other approach, like optimize, optimization of LPM tables, please refer to the paper. With this design, each layer of network is able to scale up horizontally and be operated by different teams accordingly. Based on the redundancy architecture design, any single point failure, no matter it's a server, a link, or a switch, will not affect the whole system. If the entire control system fails, data plan is able to continue process packets as it keeps the last good states of forwarding tables. If the entire routing system fails, control system will stop synchronizing the forwarding rules from routing plan to the data plan. Thus, data plan can still forwarding packet properly. With regard to the disaggregate design, there are multiple parts available between the peering device and the routing modules. We need to distribute the BFD message into multiple parts, such that there are enough BFD packets available to report the healthy states of the remote peers. By leveraging these technologies, we are able to provide non-stop forwarding and non-stop routing capability to our customers. Now, Let's revisit the customer access scenarios and see how DSR works for them. For the private connection, we, we can set up two parts. On the top, BGP session is directly established between DSR and the customer routers. At the bottom, IPsec terminal is also deployed for the traffic traveling the internet. Both the routing information will be propagated to VPC. Usually, VPC will choose the optimal routing parts like the private connection. If the private connection fails, VPC can quickly switch to the VPN channels to send the traffic back to the customer. For global end users to assess the content on the cloud, we also deploy DSR for communicating with external ISP and internal VPC. For outbound traffic, DSR is able to choose the best existing point for users' traffic instead of counting on the BGP routing. The key challenge for this case including massive scale routing tables and the various traffic engineer requirement. By deploying DSR, both of them has been greatly improved. For security purpose, we usually deploy firewall service in the cloud. We can simply forward the traffic to the firewall service through DSR. To do that, we program flexible rules as DIP mapping to firewall with a tuple to steer in point the traffic, and the rules like SIP mapping to firewall with an I tuple to steer in outbound traffic to the same firewall service. However, for the inbound DDoS traffic, the problem becomes hard but interesting. Notice that 
DSR is built on common servers. The DDoS traffic is always short bursts and high volume. To protect our servers, we would like to redirect the DDoS traffic at the access switch instead of forwarding plan. Here, the attack traffic is forwarded based on layer 3 routing tables. That means the access switch has to work at the layer 3 switches. Now the problem becomes each switch currently works at layer 2. How we let uh, layer 2 switches for warning traffic based on layer 3 routing tables? We leave it a quiz and the solution is explained in the paper. For operation, we need a real time monitoring and operating system. Here we just take the forwarding plan monitoring as an example. Three levels of probing are introduced here, which are cluster level, server level, and core level, in order to quickly detect and handle failures. In addition, sufficient statistic and event like packet drop, CRC error, will be reported to the control plan in real time. In the future, we will enhance the network visibility and monitoring. We need a global view end-to-end -end network quality detection and analysis system for different network layers, such as the overlay network monitoring. In summary, by leveraging this disaggregated software-defined router architecture, we managed to provide the cloud a high scalable, flexible, and efficient access service for different customers. Thanks for listening, and I'm ready to take questions.